is that oh, hi. Um, hi there i'm looking for um miss jennifer smith yes yeah, speaking good hello there um you have a telephone appointment with us this afternoon can i just confirm yes. uh, your full name please and date of birth yes yeah. I'm Jennifer Smith, 121177. Um, and your, your address, please? Um, Fulham Palace Road in Hammersmith, oh, W9 okay. TRFR. Fantastic. OK, just making sure that you we have the right person now, um, because we're doing this um, uh, on a telephone, um, I'm going to be typing up my notes at the same time. So you might hear me typing uh, and sometimes there might be some slight delay because <clears throat> I'm not very good at typing. Uh, okay. Do we have your consent to share your clinical record um, with other healthcare professionals that might be involved in your care in the future? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, notes to your GP as well. Is that okay? okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. Um, because we're on the uh, uh, the phone, I'm going to use the speaker phone on um, mind, um, and I would advise you to do the same so that we can have our hands free as well. Is that okay? okay? Yeah. So your GP has asked us to talk to you about um, your breathing problems. Can you just tell me a little bit yeah. more about what you've been experiencing, please? Yeah. So probably a couple of months ago now. Um, so I developed a chest infection um, it all kind of stemmed after we had a, a woman in it was quite a dusty environment and it really affected my breathing and I was coughing quite a bit and as as the day went on I was getting quite chesty um, yeah I was really struggling for a day or two and I saw the GP who advised I've probably got a chest infection mm -hmm. treated me with antibiotics it did settle down definitely but my breathing just hasn't been quite right since then um, right. And I just, I mean, not, it's nothing severe, but I can just know it's not right. And I get breathless every now and again. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. I saw the GP again and they referred on to yourselves. Okay. So when you get this, um, um, uh, breathe, these breathing problems, do you make any funny noises going in and out of your chest? Yeah, I think initially when it's particularly bad, um, mm -hmm. especially when I'd first got um the first few days was really quite what I would say was a wheezing noise um mm -hmm. and you could, you could definitely hear it and I was struggling and also a little bit bubbly right I see as well okay and was this at any particular day or uh, time of day or night that you were experiencing these problems um obviously initially just after this workman had been it was particularly bad but I do find that now it's more so early in the morning I'm, I'm waking up I just have to get out of bed because I'm feeling quite breathless and starting coughing a little bit so I tend to get up um but yeah um definitely first thing in the morning it does tend to settle but it's not every day it's right. just every now and again that it's happening but it, but it is kind of a few times a week now that it is happening you have much of I a cough say. I do when at those times, yeah, I have a little bit of a, it's not productive like that other one I was having. It's just a little mm -hmm. dry, tickly cough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, every now and again. Does the cough ever wake you from sleep? Not so much the cough. Um, I do wake up every now and again, mostly just feeling a bit uncomfortable with my breathing. A little bit of a cough, perhaps, but not really getting me up out of bed. Okay. And um, when you are um, uh, feeling breathless, does this um, stop you from doing any of your normal activities? Um, not really. I think I'm managing to do, I probably do avoid going to the gym perhaps if on those days. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll just tend to try and get on with it as much as I can, but I tend to feel quite tired at the end of the day if if I have been. I see. Yeah. Have you um, ever been diagnosed with asthma before? No, no. Is there anybody in your family with asthma? No, right, no all. one. All right. Do you have any other problems with allergies such as hay fever or? Eczema? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I have quite bad reactions. I've had a few reactions over the years, especially with cats mm -hmm. and things like that. So I do have um, a cat allergy. Um, cool. hay fever which seems to be worsening actually over the years mm -hmm. and horses 
dust, oh, okay. <laughs> every everything really. Wow, okay. So quite a few. Right, right. <clears throat> and do you take anything for all of these allergies at the moment? Yeah, I tend to just take something if I get symptoms develop. So if I'm having a particularly bad day, I'm starting to get itchy eyes and runny nose, I'll start taking the antihistamine. Right. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't really take any. Okay. So um, do you have any other um, medical problems as far as you're aware? No, you're not, no, taking, other you're not taking any other medication? No. Excellent. Okay. No. Nothing. And um, what do you do for a living? I am a hairdresser. Okay. Oh, and oh, that's interesting. So, do you find any of the chemicals that you use um, uh, um, when you're um, treating hair? Does, does that affect you in any way? Does that cause problems with your breathing? Actually, yeah. So sometimes when we're colouring the hair, the, the strong smells tend mm -hmm. to really catch my breath quite a bit sometimes. Right. Um, Does it make you wheeze? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I've noticed. I have not that I've noticed. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Well, that's very, that's very useful. Um, now, bef before we, we sent you um, the appointment date, we also asked for your GP to supply you with something called a peak flow meter. Um, did you yes. manage to get hold of one? Excellent. And we also asked that you look up the um, technique to use the peak flow meter over the internet on YouTube. When we sent you the link okay. on, on the YouTube to, to demonstrate how to use it properly. Have you had a quick look at that? Oh, no, sorry, oh, I haven't. Don't worry, don't yet. worry. So we, we can just go through this right now, if you don't mind. So okay. what I'd like you to do, we're going to test your breathing to see um, whether or not um, uh, this is asthma that we are dealing with. First of all, I just want to see, um, to hear your normal breathing. So what I'd like you to do is just to take a really okay. big breath in and then empty your lungs out slowly as well for me. So just, <laughs> and then <sighs> as well. So you can hear. That's it. If you come just get a little bit closer to the phone so that I can hear to the microphone so I can just hear um, how you are breathing out. So deep breath in again. OK, so that's nice and clear. OK, so with the peak flow, what I'd like you to do is to take a really big breath in for your lungs right up to uh -huh. the very top of air then put your lips tight around the tube and then blast it out as uh -huh. hard as you can for me. Okay, so make sure that the um, the point is back at zero first. Make sure that yeah. the point is back at zero. Okay. okay. So try and take yeah, a really big is, breath yeah. in. Yeah. And then open your mouth, put your lips around the tube, then blast it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Was well, did you actually do anything then? Because I didn't hear very much. I did, I did. It's okay. saying 140. Yeah, it doesn't, do doesn't do that sound again? like, I think that you, you may not have taken a really big enough breath in. So I couldn't hear, you know, you really doing it um, um, as, as hard as you could. So this time around, make sure that you really take a, the biggest breath in as you can before you blow it out as hard as you can. So let's try okay. again. So really All big right. breath in. <laughs> oh, that sounds much better. Much better. What did you manage this time round? 320. That's not bad. Not bad. I'm sure you can do better. Can we just have one more go, please? Uh -huh. so really big breath in. Right to the top and then blast. OK, that sounds a little bit better. Um, what did we get this time? Um, 310, actually. 310. OK. OK, just for luck, we'll just do one more because we always like to do the best of three blows. We we'll take the, the read okay. for the best of three blows. So just do one more time for me, please. Right into the very top. OK, that doesn't sound as good as the first one. <laughs> it's the same. It's um, 320. 320. OK, so it's not too bad. So it's not quite as good as we'd expect. How tall are you, Jennifer? Um, I'm um, 170 centimetres. 170. And uh, you were born in, what was it, 77, I think. So 77. You, yes. So your peak flow should be around about 400. So I haven't worked it out completely. But uh -huh. it, um, from, from rough guess, it should be around about 400. But I'll work it out okay. a bit better when I get my calculator out in a minute. But it doesn't sound like it's as good as it, it, it should be. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's possible that you do have asthma. 
okay. the way that we're going to to check whether you have asthma is to ask you to do the peak flow that you have just done twice a day mm -hmm. morning and evening the best of three blows and if you could keep okay. a diary of the results yeah um, the next few weeks then we can mm -hmm. see the pattern of your peak flow over the course of time and this will help us determine whether or not there is variation in your peak flow that would indicate that you have asthma mm -hmm. but in addition to that we also because you've been getting so many symptoms that okay. sound like asthma we're going to start you on some treatment as well and then we can also monitor the effects of treatment to see whether or not the peak flow improves and your as long with your symptoms yeah. okay okay so in order for us to choose um, what type of um, uh, inhaler that you can use for your asthma. We're just going to do one little more test okay. to see whether or not um, what device would be suitable for you. Okay. okay. So this time around, rather than breathing in, I want you to yeah. breathe all the way out. And then I want you to purse your lips as though uh -huh. you're about to blow a kiss. And then I want you to suck in okay. deeply and sharply for about two or three seconds. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate. Okay. This. So yeah. empty my lungs. <sighs> okay my lips first and I'm going to go okay so I want to see whether yeah. you can do that for me please so empty okay. your lungs completely and then purse your lips and then shut then breathe in okay didn't sound quite as hard as it could be so just try that once again but I want you to really suck in deeply and sharply okay so breathe all the way out Come closer to the microphone and then... Did something happen then? Didn't yeah, quite... could you not? <laughs> Didn't quite hear that. Oh, let okay. let okay. me come right. close. Okay, maybe maybe you're more suitable for 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 an aerosol inhaler rather than a, than than one of the other ones that need a sharp. So instead of breathing in deeply, with that case. What we, um, and sharply, what I'd like you to do now, instead of empty your lungs again, and this time round, just do a slow, uh -huh. and let's see, uh, inspiration, a slow breathe in through uh -huh. lips, and let's see how long you can breathe in for. Okay, so empty oh, okay. your lungs completely, and then that's it. And then now, now take a nice, slow, deep breath in. Okay, okay. That sounds a bit better. I think that maybe rather than giving you um, a, the initial device, we might try you on an aerosol device with a spacer attached to it. Um, so okay. what we're going to do is ask your GP to prescribe you uh, an inhaler that's brown in colour. Yeah. And we're going to ask okay. you to take two puffs in the morning and two puffs in the evening, one puff at a time through a, a tube called a spacer device. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all this okay. is very confusing, but what you uh, would like you to do is to um, look up on a couple of websites about uh -huh. how to use the inhaler with a spacer. Now, okay. there's a website called uh, writebreathe.com. Okay. We'll write this in the letter to you so that. Fine. So that Good. Right so it's either, you can either look it up on writebreathe.com or um, uh, a website called Asthma UK. Okay. So they, they have videos to demonstrate how to use. Uh, the, de the devices correctly. So we would like you to take two puffs twice a day regularly. Uh -huh. uh, if you take the puffs, it would be useful for you to do the peak flow. Okay. As well, so that if you do the two together, you won't forget. Yeah, okay. And we can get a pattern of your peak flow over the next few weeks. So if you start doing the peak flow before you start the inhaler anyway, for yeah. a week or so, get the inhaler and then uh -huh. carry on doing the peak flow diary. And then we can see whether or not the brown inhaler makes any difference to your peak flow readings. Right. Then we can um, okay. in, a, in a month or so's time to see um, whether or not things have changed. Great. Lovely. It sounds good. Thank good. you. Do you have any questions to ask? Um, no, I don't think I do, actually. I'll try that and see how I go. So as soon as you get our letter, you know that the GP will have received the letter too. So contact yeah. you to, to um, get the brown inhaler. But in the interim, okay. um, keep a diary of your peak flow readings. That'll be really helpful. I will do. Okay, lovely. Well, thank you very much. Um, take thank care. you. We'll speak to you in, a, in about uh, six to eight weeks time. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.